Today's episode of Comics for Fun and Profit is brought to you by Comic Book Paper Stock. Do you remember when comics were like disposable? Newsprint, 50 cents, buck? Well, forget about that. Because now it's cardstock covers and glossy, thick, heavy mill, color saturated goodness and ten dollars eight dollars seven dollars what was wrong with a disposable comic and if you then if you chose if you chose to preserve it bag and board it and alphabetize it and complete your run it was exciting with a disposable medium but now they're not disposable they're actually printed on the stiffest, hardest, most expensive paper stock in the history of the world. The story's even shorter than it was back when it was cheaply printed. This is this is dumb. It's okay if the paper gets a bent corner. It's okay if it's got a wrinkle in it. You know? It's still the comic book. The story's still there. More fun, less profit. I guess is what I'm saying. More fun, less profit. You're listening to comics for. Did you clap? Uh, I don't think I did. I, don't, I, I was too. I was watching my Skype. I realize you don't record. Need to clap. Was like <laughs> when I clap and you don't clap, I can't stop thinking about fine. the fact that I was the only person that clapped. I'll, so let's I'll start over. I'll think. It'll be fine. <laughs> Recording right now. And three, two, one. There we go. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 805 for comics originally releasing February 21st, 28th and March 1st. We are right into that third month of the year already, Drew. Drew, we've seen no more new movies. We've done our big movie for the for the recent future, but there's always the wonderful world of comics, Drew. What else is going on in comics? Well, well last, last week we got a a little peek, peek at the dawn of DC, and it looked like that was ramping up. So this week, we're excited to check out what the Marvel folks have with their offerings that are in the March previews, the March Marvel previews for May. And I think we we kind of spoiled it last week when we were talking about the new Avengers lineup when Jed mm-hmm. McKay taken over. Um, that's their cover. That's there their cover. There you go. Yeah, so they're excited about that as well. They are pushing that. Looks like they're pushing group. We have another Disney Avengers cover. This one, another good one. That's another one I want. That's there. pretty dope right there. I like that. Yeah, one. it's really nice. That is the Disney 100 variant cover for ASM 25. Ah, I like that one, but Which I would have probably bought anyway. So that's yeah. that's I like it when I don't have to, to <coughs> reach out too far. Very nice. But we are going to start with the big dog, and that is Avengers number one, written by Jeff McKay, C.F. Villa on art. And boy, we got a bunch of really cool variant covers by some of my favorites. We got Derek Chu. We got uh, uh, John Tyler Christopher doing negative space variants. Uh, Let's see. We got the Scotty Young variants, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, I'm looking at some of them here, and... um... I don't know. I can't, like, the ones they're showing aren't that great. So I'm, I'm hoping they're holding the really, really good ones for later. So this version of the Avengers is Falcon Cap, Thor, Iron Man, Vision, Panther, Scarlet, and uh, Miss Marvel. So it doesn't look like we're doing too crazy yet. No, that's that's a pretty good lineup. Oh, yeah. Uh, that uh, Hidden Gem variant um, with... Vision kind of phasing through the tombstone doesn't really look like he's phasing. It looks like it's he's like lost his. Just looks like he's got nubbin legs and they didn't want to draw legs. the feet. We've seen yeah. that for a long, long time. Yeah, it doesn't look like they've they phased through. So is that fine? That's final on that. I don't I don't yeah. like that one that one iota. Super dumb. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is like I like I said last week. This is going to get me back into. Avengers for a couple. I'm gonna do some sampling. I'm gonna check it out and uh, give her give it a shot. See if I can get back into a team book. The star, the icon, the witch, the construct, the god, the engineer, the king. The world is ever in nice. peril, and a new team of Avengers mobilizes to meet 
any danger that dare threaten the planet. But when Terminus attacks a new and insidious danger rears its head, one of the Avengers knows all too well, and one of them, and one that comes to them in the most dangerous of guises, that of a friend. So somebody's a traitor. <laughs> exactly. We're rocking two facsimiles. Uh, Avengers 1 from 1963 and Iron Man 1 from 1968. Both $4 facsimile variants for these grails that you are probably not going to find. Yeah, you're, yeah, most of us aren't going to ever. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some of you. Planet of the Apes 2, we have Monkeys on Fire. Yeah. Now, did they keep the are the facsimiles back to normal pricing? Four bucks. Yep, that was part of me saying four dollars. Was um was it DC that did was was doing like the eight dollar? Yeah, it was a couple eight dollar ones. So yeah. it wasn't Marvel never did that. Okay, they did. Oh, they did. Yep. But they, some of them were oversized. Like they did like a giant size X Men, and so they charged eight bucks for that and things mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Okay. So back to Planet of the Apes. We um we're kind of interested in this, right? Yeah, absolutely. It seemed very interesting. Yeah. I'm also very interested in Edge of Spider-Verse, number one. Boy, no we way. were joking this. I thought we put this to bed. I thought so, too, but we're back to Edge of Spider-Verse. Um, and and this, this one involves dinosaurs. Carla Pacheco and Xander Cannon writing it with uh, Pepe Perez and Moore oh, on art. Spider-Rex. Spider-Rex returns to face Venomsaurus. Plus... Who is the spider killer? Xander Cannon introduces the world to the scariest spider character ever created with three exclamation points after it. Bringing your favorite breakout characters back as well as introducing brand new spiders who will blow your mind. Xander we Cannon have is, to a, buy it. is the greatest name. I want to be Xander Cannon. I love that name. That's awesome. Clearly not a, not a Gen Xer. Xander Cannon is the most... <laughs> Gen Z name I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, that's true. And we're going to do two of them this month. We're not going to yeah. mess around. And they all have completely different creative teams. I hate that. Yeah. Which means this will be the most disjointed story of all time, especially since uh, issue two is a Disney princess issue. Why do we have... Well, wow, we do. We have completely different... So also it's an anthology of different Spider-Verse characters and it's not a continuation. It's just, hey, here's some pick some of your favorite Spider-Verse characters, tell your story, we'll slap them together into a four issue miniseries that is not connected in any way. Introducing brand new spider characters. Where are you at? I'm looking at number two. I'm looking at number one. It says this series introduces brand new spider characters. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, number two, Spentress is is has been around, right? Uh huh. Yeah. But and I thought Spider Rex was around too. Yeah, we we we've, we've seen Spider Rex and Venomsaurus, but they're also promising prom- ugh, promising us brand new characters. That's fine, but it, oh, it still doesn't feel like it's going to be a connected story. No. Yeah, but I don't think it's an. I don't know if, what kind of anthology it is or what's going on. And they're five but, bucks yeah. each. I was slightly interested when I saw issue one, and I am not at all interested after I saw issue two. Yeah. So they they, they hooked you and lost you in sub- subsequent pages. Yep. That's that's like that's that's vintage Drew. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm I'm hooked at the title and the creative team, and then I read the solicit and I'm out. Sometimes. And then we have Miracle Man by Gaiman and Buckingham, The Silver Age, number seven which is Miracle Man versus Young Miracle Man. And then we have Attention Retailers, Miracle Man by Game In and Buckingham, the Silver Age number seven cover was originally solicited for issue six. The new cover for issue six will be, be revealed <laughs> at a later date. So we've had so many issues with, we think these uh, previews are garbage and phoned in. Yeah. And here's yet another reason that they can't get anything right. So, so here's issue seven, which was originally issue six. Six will be out. At some point, and it'll have a cover. We just don't know what it looks like yet. But eventually, we'll let you know what that cover is that you pre-ordered based on this cover. Yes. I gotcha. And you know what we're going to do with this one? We're going to polybag it for your pleasure because why why are we polybagging 
books again? <laughs> what is that? Is there a, is there a collector's card in there? What's the reasoning behind that? <laughs> Less people will see their screw up. Uh, I, mean, it, I guess you don't want them flipping through it. Why are we polybagging? It doesn't. Even, it says it's because it's mature. Because it's mature on the inside. Okay, fine. That'll work. That's enough. All right. Who knows? All right, Drew. I've told you many, many times. I'm a big, big Silk fan. Big Silk. Like, the biggest. The, the biggest. The better silk. of all the characters to come yes. out, even yes. though Spider Gwen is the one that we've felt we've latched onto. Yeah. But, but we I'm liked not her sure so about, much. More. I'm not so sure about this one. So here we have Silk number one. You know, stop me if you've heard this before. Silk yeah. number one. Yeah. And written by, by Emily, Emily Kim. Emily she, Kim. She did the last one. Yeah. Yep. And Iga Guara on art. Bunch of cool covers, bunch of crappy covers. Um, of course, we have window shade covers. Yeah, and that's not a bad one. Yeah, because it's just a window. It's very, lo- it's less shade than less your shade. average window shade. <laughs> Silk swings back into the Spider Verse. There's something rotten in Los Angeles, and Ace Detective Cindy Moon is on the case. Wait, that can't be right. In this mind-bending new series, Cindy will face old foes and never-before-seen dangers that will make her. The Take Her to the Breaking Point, brought to you by all-star writer Emily Kim and Marvel veteran Iga Giara. So she's a detective now? Uh, um, okay. I think What was she doing before? She was like, was she a student? Yes. That's, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. That sounds more interesting, anyway. And we're moving her to Los Angeles. Okay. But... This is like a year after we gave Emily Kim the reins for a five issue miniseries, and it was what well, it was the uh, the witch story, right? The Korean witch story. Yeah, that was yeah. Oh, yeah. That wasn't great. Wasn't no. great. Um, and how could uh, you how could you not make an ongoing for Silk? It's not that friggin' hard. I, I'm I'm guessing because the well, I mean, it obviously did well enough to come back again, and not as a volume another volume and how many silk volumes silk has kind of had like four or five yeah volumes already have played this game many many times maybe Second topping first, out at the same 12, as the 13 first. issues <laughs> but for its longest run i don't know let's look right here this is play my favorite little game of okay so silk volume one 2015 silk volume two 2016 to 2017 silk volume three 2021 Silk Volume 4, I'm sorry, Silk Volume 3, 2021. Silk Volume 4, 2022. Silk Volume 5, 2023. <laughs> yeah, five volumes in four years. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, okay. All right. And that's how they, and that, but that's how they're doing it now, I guess. So we shouldn't be surprised. I don't know, it's just weird because, okay, so, so the first one, went, the very first one went seven issues. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's... Uh, sure the second one the 2016 to 2017 went a whopping 19 issues and, volume three and instead of just having you know this be the solicit for silk what would it be 48 57 mm-hmm. something like that after so many years since what did you say the first one was 2016 mm-hmm. 2017 yeah we play yeah. these games. We play in these relaunch games, and obviously it works. Obviously the sales spike and falter in such a way that it makes it monetarily make sense. I just don't understand why we continue to fall for it over and over again. I mean, mm-hmm. why why are we buying more copies of Silk Number 1 than we would have bought if it was silk number six when it's really this it's just a start of a new storyline yeah why, so do volume, we, why do we do volume it? three of silk was a five issue series volume four of silk was a five issue series and volume five of say of silk is a five issue series so really i guess what you had 27 28 issues yeah some, yeah okay but it is kind of stupid when the same creative team just writes another five issue series. Yeah, I, I mean, of the yeah, same if, name. If you got a new creative t- team and you want to, you know, give them a spark, and they're doing something new and different with the character, great. But it's the same one you're bringing back. Mm-hmm. So you're relaunching for another five. I guess. 
Or maybe like they can't keep up with the monthly schedule. Maybe Iguera is not competent enough as an artist to crank out one a month. Dude, so, you can not crank out 32 pages or so. You suck. Or uh, creatively, they want to tell this story but also do something else. And so they don't want to be on an ongoing all. Maybe it's a this creator decision, but I doubt it. I bet it's marketing and Marvel telling them, do five, take a break, come back and do another five next year. Why, why I'm surprised. It's just like, oh, my God, the sun came up again. Can you believe that? Mm-hmm. That's like every day of my life that's happened. <laughs> why am I so surprised? And my boy, Steve Orlando... He's coming back with Spider-Man 2099 Dark Genesis number one, another five issue that I will not read. <clears throat> not that I don't like Spidey 2099. I mean, I don't. I guess I don't really. <laughs> I was going to say. I, 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 it's actually what that that's exactly what that means. I really don't like Spidey Man, Spider-Man 2099. Um, I'll, pro- I'll watch the, uh, the cartoon that's coming out in the Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's about as far as it goes. But I am reading Steve Orlando's Scarlet Witch and enjoying it. There's that. Excellent. I'm going to get two, three of those this month. Oh, no, f- four. Are we getting the whole miniseries in the month? It looks like the whole thing's coming out. Now that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to do it all five weeks. Is it Mark, May doesn't have five weeks, does it? They're not giving dates. Hmm. They're just all solicited. And May will have five release Wednesdays. Yeah. Okay. Third, tenth, seventeenth, twenty fourth, and thirty first. Well, I I I like this idea. Um, if you're a comic shop, let's go with a comic shop first. Now let's go with the okay. Let's go with us as reader. Okay. And you and you see this and you're like, oh, okay. So I'm going to commit to twenty dollars, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, I want to get I want to get all five of them. Uh, is that an easy sell for you, or is it harder than just saying I'll try it, I'll buy one? I think it's harder to dip in and dip out. I think it's easier to just in for a penny and for a pound when they're concurrent. Yeah, I mean if they're all solicited the same month, you've got yeah. to decide. Do you want to? Do you want to buy the entire series? You mm-hmm. can't. You're not deciding. I want to try it and see if I like it. Yeah. So you have to commit. I think yeah. that's bad for sales because you don't get the samplers. Yeah, you don't get the people that jump on late that had yeah. that tried it and liked it. Because I think it's a mediocre pitch. So I'm like on the fence. Uh, I guess I'll try number one. Well, I'm not. I'm definitely not trying all five. Well, you got to try num- You've got to read number five because of the Moon Knight twenty ninety nine. Twenty ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, you're you're probably right about that. <laughs> um, and now as a okay, so there, I think it's readers aren't going to want to do it, and sales aren't going to be great, unfortunately, mm-hmm. because it's not a great scintillating pitch, and you have to commit to the whole series. Um, and I think if I put my comic shop owner hat on, no oh mind. I would look at it and then now I have to do I adjust do I buy X number of one, twenty percent less of two, twenty you know, thirty forty percent less of three, you know, because I know there's gonna be a gradual decline anyway. Uh, you know, how do I buy this? But probably less of a gradual decline decline seeing as it's yeah interesting yeah i mean i don't think i mean i don't think you buy the same amount of one and two that you buy of four and five and you've got to make that decision there when you have very little on ramp and and customer feedback to make that Mm -hmm. what do you base this on your last spidey 2099 sales and anybody who has it on their pull list the last one on the pool. That's not a lot. It'd be a, it'd be a tough. It'd be a tough order, I think. Yep. I say skip it all. 
<laughs> I say skip it all too. Then we go to Carnage Reigns, which is an eight dollar one shot. Carnage Range Alpha number one. Alex Pacnado, Cody Ziggler, Julius Atta, and more with the cover by Stegman. That's not it, is it? I don't know. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not interested in this. I've read enough Carnage, I think, to last a lifetime. (laughs) Like any of those. Miles Morales has got some. He's got Carnage on him, too, doesn't he? Yeah, I like that icon variant. Well, because that's part two of Carnage Reign. It starts in Carnage Reign's Alpha and finishes in uh, Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. So if you're reading Miles Morales, your you're book st- that you've been reading is going to be confusing unless you spend $8. Eight, eight extra bucks, yeah. Yeah, and then we're jumping over yeah. to Carnage yeah. 13 to continue Or it. if you read these and you and you don't want to, You'll just, you just, I'm just going to skip this story. I'll, I'll hop back on in seven. You give the reader us jumping off. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> you, they, you, do, you give them the easy way to be like, I'm out. You know what? This is a good time to quit because I definitely don't want to put, buy an $8 pre, you know, preview of what I need to know for this issue. It, this needs to be marketed differently. This needs to say, you know, it's not part two. Know. We'll have a, a, a hefty re- recap page for you for Miles Morales readers. They're not going to do that. Yeah, oh. I, see no, I see no reason to. I just keep scrolling and finding new information, though. Here's Carnage Reigns Part 3 that's in. Yes. So is there is there going to be a Carnage Reigns uh, uh, Omega <laughs> coming up? <laughs> of course. You got a capstone at the end. Yeah, no, I don't see that. But So, yeah, then Carnage 13 finishes it up. And then we have Extreme Venomverse 1 and 2. And this is, again, written by three people and drawn by 14. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it that long? No, it's just regular size. David Popose doing that. We should give him something else to do besides weird stuff. Mm-hmm. And the Sente coming back with Storm number one of five. I really like her work. I don't read a lot of X-Men books, but I might give this a shot. I'm not as familiar with Sid Kotian as the artist, but Alan Davis is a good cover artist. Yeah. We're getting an art germ. Um, we're not showing us that art germ, are they? No. Yeah, it's the, the main one there. Well, there it is right there. Yeah, that's beautiful. So then the Alan Davis is this, this one that's not that great. Yeah, I like this. Um, I'll probably... And she's got an all-new villain in this issue. They're going to introduce a new villain. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably in on Storm number one. That's probably enough. You give me an art germ cover, and the Cynthia as a writer, intro a new villain, um, single character to wrap my mind around instead of a, a big group. I'm in. You got me. Well, that was darn easy. It was. It was. It only takes a five-step process to get my money. <laughs> <laughs> Keep giving Peach Pomoko her Demon Wars books. Oh my! Uh, you think they're selling? They it must, must be. be right? They keep going back to it, and they even got Kevin Eastman to do a cover. I wonder if Kevin Eastman's just like, I made the freaking turtles, dude. I don't, I don't do variant covers for this Peach Momoko chick. <laughs> I'm too good for this. But he is. He's doing not the first, second, third, fourth, but the sixth cover yeah good money good money in variant covers mm-hmm. Groot one through four we got a four issue series by Dan Abnett okay Damien Cucero I don't know um I, do, I, do I care much about Groot he doesn't really talk I don't that's a tough sell is it a and it's mm-hmm. four issues of that I don't know because <laughs> they're basically all silent issues Right, usually. Yeah. Warlock Rebirth. Boy, this looks straight out of like 1984, man. Mm hmm. Really dated. The very disjointed Stormbreakers variant. And this Guardian of the Galaxy 2. Ah, I, the part I liked the most about the, the issue one last week was it looked very uh, uh, Western. 
This yeah. doesn't look as Western. I still think it kind of does. Well, there's yeah, swords, there's, I guess. Yeah. But. It looks like they could be in a sandstorm and we get the reflection of Star-Lord with his cowboy hat on still. Yeah. I just hope it stays that way because I'm very interested if it is. They're caught in the middle. They're still caught up in the middle of a civil war. Mm-hmm. Denny Catch Ghost Rider 1. Yeah. You know, a character with multiple people playing it. I don't know that I like that. It didn't work for me for Lanterns. It doesn't to work for me for Ghost Riders. Yeah, you know? You know, we got Spider-Man as Peter Parker. You know? And oh, 2099 and Miles Morales. Right, but it's a... And, and I guess it's so, a variation. But and it's, not, it's not that. Spider Gwen. And, and Batman. He's got Ben Riley the, the clone. And and Batman mostly has been Bruce Wayne, right? Mostly. And then yeah. they occasionally somebody else has put the cow on, but it's not been for very long. And it's been an established character. I don't know. They do that with Venom, right? And Carnage. Mm-hmm. Aren't they different people inside of the, the symbiotes a lot yeah, of times? On a few a few different occasions. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, it's gonna, you gotta be consistent. Make a new character if you want to do somebody else. Al Ewing doing Fury number one. Mm, I don't know. Do I want to do Shield and? I guess this is not Shield. It's Scorpio. S C O R P I O. I wonder what that stands for. Sorry, dumb. Dumb. What is it? It's a dumb. Sure, it's something dumb. <laughs> it'll be something that I will love for, I will not remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a variant covered by Chris Samney that's interesting, but other than that, uh, we slide down to Daredevil and Echo. You now, what did you Echo send me? Fan. The Echo might have been permanently delayed. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of. I text it to you. Yes. You don't usually read. You definitely don't read my emails and or email in general. And then you hardly ever read my texts or respond because you hate me. There it is. Uh, Marvel reportedly um, slow down of Disney Plus output. Echo and Ironheart might be delayed indefinitely. Might be. Just like might be. It's one of those clickbaity headlines. Did you really sent good. this to me on uh, Saturday at 12.42 a.m. and you're wondering why I didn't respond to it. You don't have to respond, but eventually you could give me a thumbs <laughs> up. A little heart. You know. Uh, damn. Ugh. Your, your trademark ugh, which is what you <laughs> mostly say to me about everything. You probably have auto programs in there. Just uh, when when Drew sends me a text, just say. Uh. I have a button called "Placate Drew." <laughs> yeah, Echo and Ironheart seemingly delayed indefinitely. Yeah, kind of a bummer. Uh, I won't, cause I like I like more content. Yeah, hundred percent. But that doesn't mean that we're not putting out four issue series. This is like they're yeah. going out of style. Yeah, um, I don't remember how was Taboo and B. Earl's last book that they did. Was it well received? I don't remember. Uh, I, don't I remember. think they're still known for their music. Yes, of course. But this cover was a phone Phil Noto. It's really nice. Um, ah, it's probably worth checking out. Mm-hmm. Probably worth reading that first one. Lovely, amazing Spider-Man twenty-five. We like that Disney 100 variant. Mm-hmm. And of course, this is a $7 book because it's the 25th issue. <laughs> <sighs> That's the only reason it doesn't it doesn't line up with anything else. Monumental 25th. Oh my God, guys. For a my book God. that had 800 books, I'm not sure that it's something you can say that 25 is monumental. Did it have it 800 or 900? Was, did it hit 900? Maybe. Again, they're not real numbers. <laughs> um, I really like this other cover um, with all the characters in the in the, in the very football. depressed Spider-Man. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Very depressed, poorly drawn Spider-Man. And that's a John Romita Jr. cover. Oops. That you don't normally like, correct? Hit or miss. Very, very hit or miss. Yeah, gotcha. But uh, is is he still is is Mary Jane still confused on what he did? We uh, storyline. Yeah, we don't we don't have definitive. I haven't read the latest, but we didn't have any definitive info. Lovely. Red Goblin four. 
Hollow's Eve 3, Spider-Man 8. Come on, slot, do something. The end of Spider-Verse continues. Wait, <laughs> and now it's in quotes because you really can't call it the end of Spider-Verse when you've got another, another yeah, Spider-Verse launched launching. Another fi- yeah. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it never used to be in quotes, but now it's in quotes because we lied. We lied. This isn't the last. Shocker. <laughs> Venom Lethal Protector 2, issue 3. Spider Gwen Shadow Clones number three, which boy doesn't look like a real book when you look at it with your eyes open. No, no, it does not. Venom 19. <sighs> that was yeah. a rough looking one, too. Cult of Carnage Misery number one. It's a five issue series by Sabir Prezada and Francesco Mortarino. So, are we just taking dark words? And pointing to them randomly and saying, there's a new character for a five-issue series. Misery, yeah. They get the thesaurus out. literally just put a Mary Jane wig on a bundle of symbiote and given it a name. Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly what that is. Oh, man. That's terrible. Yes. Terrible. And you know what? I, I Marvel's got some characters, you know, that they could be cranking out. I don't... Uh, maybe this appeals to an audience that is not me it has to it has not to. a chance x-men this before the fall is maybe selling eighteen thousand. <laughs> yeah maybe we'll never know we'll never know x-men before the fall sons of x number one size spurrier uh battle of the titans of the x universe i don't even know who the titans of the x universe are anymore Mm-mm. x-men red that's an 11 and I am liking X-Men. these icon variants. These icon variants. I've yeah, seen about half nice. a dozen of them. I very much like them. Yeah, they're pretty nice. Wolverine at 33. Curious how that's doing. X-Forces, X-Forces at 40. That'd be a book I think you would relaunch more with new creative teams. Mm-hmm. X-Men 22, a little Modoc. I very much like that Rogue and Gamut cover on three. That's a really good cover. Steve Morris, I think that's yours. That's awesome. Where are we at? Uh, digital fifth or digital fifty, physical fifty. Bishop War College. What am I looking at? No, two two down from that. Rogan Gambit. X, X, past X twenty three. Maybe oh, yeah. legions. Because this is um, that's fifty two. How are you on fifty? Oh. Yeah. Magic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Rogan Gamut looks good. Excellent. Doctor Strange. Forgot it got relaunched. Avengers War Across Time. That's old school, right? Mm hmm. Avengers Beyond. Scarlet Witch continues with its fifth issue. Cap, the Sentinel of Liberty is at 12. But the Symbol of Truth is at 13. Hellcat, three of five. Did I read the first one? I think I did. Underwhelming. So Captain America's Symbol of Truth 13. We've got Falcon Cap kneeing OG Cap in the nutsack and punching him oh. on the front cover. Dig the uh, Invincible Iron Man 6 cover by Kale Ngu um, from the weathered pages to mm-hmm. the scratched up title box. To it's the, the, the classic OG logo in the top left. Yeah, that logo. Um, the, I don't know, it looks like almost like paper dolls style of art. Good looking Hawkeye. Really cool. Yeah, I like it too. Fantastic Four. Uh, it's, it's seventh issue, and this is one where no, we got. No, not seventh issue. Seven hundredth issue, Drew. Oh, okay. Going to be big. I a little restraint, only six dollars. Yeah, and we didn't lead with it. And it's you know it's been really good. And we did mm-hmm. find out finally. Hey, why are why is everybody up? Why 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 did the team break up? Why are they not together? Um, what happened to the Baxter Building, uh, et cetera? We found all that out last issue, and it only took 
what, three issues to find that out, four issues to find that out. So much less time than we've spent on Spider-Man trying to find out what's going on. No, that's some good pacing. It's a little better, better pacing. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, ideally, issue one, you'd know what was going on. <laughs> I think we could draw it up. Stan Lee would let you know right out the gate what's happening. Yeah. But still a very, very good book. And hats off to them it, it, uh, hitting issue seven and 700. And I, I, I agree. This should have been a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. You can dump some of those X books down a little further in the book. Some of those venoms and the carnages and just, just pop that one up to the top because that's a big deal. Yeah. That is a book that had a several long runs building towards 700. Yeah. This isn't like some of these things where we're patchworking 94 three issue series together. If you recall when Marvel, you know, sold everything, you know, they sold the characters to the highest bidder back when they were going through bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Spidey's at Sony. That's why Fantastic Four was at Fox. X was at Fox, um, et cetera. Um, so when Fantastic Four was gone, they just stopped printing Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. And so it had a huge years and years gap of not having a book on the stands mm-hmm. at all, which of all the big, like when you look back at, the beginnings of Marvel, Fantastic Four is a tentpole title for that company starting it all, you know, mm-hmm. Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men, Avengers. Those are the big ones that started it all. And so to have the, such a long gap, so these other books that are at 800 and 900, there's a reason because mm-hmm. they stopped printing the dang thing for so long. So good. They, I'm glad it's back. They really should have celebrated a little higher um, in the book, made a little bigger deal. Maybe they will as it gets closer. But you know, this was their chance. We're not even close to the end of this stupid solicit. This is <laughs> well, too friggin' long. Well, we're getting we'll, we'll hit trades soon, buddy. Grease the wheels at trades. Uh, no, we're not, we're not that close. You <sighs> think talk- we're close? We're not that close. Uh, it's only 132 pages. Uh, we're at 62. <laughs> Moon Knight uh, is at 23. Is that Venom? No. That's the uh, that's one of the other characters. That's not actual Venom. Actually Venom. Moon Knight and Venom fight side by side, but we're not Looks like him, though, doesn't Moon it? Moon Knight and Venom on the cover. <laughs> it does look like him, doesn't it? A little bit. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider hits issue three. Regular Ghost Rider hits 14. That's a good-looking Bjorn Barron's cover. Yeah, very nice. She-Hulk at 13. Joe Fix-It finishes up with its fifth issue of, the, of five. Hulk has an annual. But David And David Papos gets a Hulk annual. Buddy, knock him dead. I hope you do really well with it. <laughs> might be one I, ch- I check into. There you go. Because I haven't enjoyed its regular run, so I might I might hop into Hulk for the annual. See what kind of story they're telling. Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, four. Silver Surfer, Ghost Light, four. Two books I completely forgot, forgot even mm-hmm. existed. We're thinking the same thing. Yeah. Captain Marvel, 49. So they're going to let her get to 50. So Kelly Thompson will get to celebrate Captain Marvel's 50th issue. That'll be nice. Look be out big. for an $8 book next month. Could be. Could be large. Spider Man, or Punisher, 12. Not Spider Man, 12. Might as well be, because that is the dumbest thing on his chest I've ever seen. Uh, yep. Uh, Thor hits 34. Deadpool. I wonder if, you know what I wonder? If there's somebody out there tracking legacy numbers. You know, we're, we're, we're leaving it up to Marvel to tell us when they hit the milestones. Somebody out there got to have a database. Or Excel, <laughs> for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> and is 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 got a running tally of these books. I, I need some fact checkers. I need some fact yeah. checkers out there. Um, I, w- I want to see some of these numbers. I want to be able to click on them and find out, you know, okay, what really makes up, you know, the 150 She-Hulks or whatever. Yeah, we went, one of them we went through because we didn't believe it. And, you know, it turned out it was right, but it was, it was, it was a longer haul than we expected. Yeah. 
Yeah, was well, yeah, was it Electra? Yeah, something like that. Somebody had like a hundred issues. Like, no way. They're about eleven. Are we still doing that same storyline? Driving me crazy. We're still doing the hand. Oh, I can't do it. Can't do it <laughs> it's been the hand forever. Well, send Chip an email and tell him what's up. Chip, you you remember me from C two E two? We talked. We laughed. <laughs> you had a good cry. You got to knock it off. Crank out some. Crank out some one and two issue story arcs, please. Predator, another needless relaunch. Same creative team. Don't you see why we're just not telling a new story, but whatevs. The last one was good, so I'm reading this one. Alien, same relaunch for no reason. You were kind of intrigued by this Star Wars Darth Vader black, white, and red. You thought that was yeah. kind of a neat concept, right? Yeah, Jason Aaron written. Uh, seems like dark storyline so definitely definitely interested in that i thought we'd already did a lando mini did, series but i it guess it was not good okay so this is but this is return of the jedi lando different era lando different gotcha. era lando, lando. Yeah. higher public nine higher public 10 both coming out in the same month star wars yoda 7 gives us yoda versus grievous and that i am down for did you ever think there'd be a day where we'd be like, maybe we're getting too many Star Wars comics? <laughs> I would just like one to be well written. Yeah, it would be nice if it was just like one can't miss mm-hmm. series. Like, like I got it, I gotta have it. I would just like them to be like, ooh, we're writing the series. Why are you writing the series? Because we have a story to tell. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna bridge the gap gap between the the last episode uh, movie and the next episode. And you're only going to get the story here or you'll get it here. You'll get dribs and drabs and and clues here. That'll be finished in the next movie or something cool like that. That's never going to happen. That should suck. (laughs) And then a bunch of collective editions. Yeah. Uh, Are you even going to glance? Are you just, are you already asleep? He's Dude, tough. this this is is I am physically exhausted from this previews. <laughs> it's not even that. It's not even the longest Marvel's preview we've ever gone through. 132 digital pages. It seems like a lot. I I get I get that. Especially going after uh, DC's, which was a little thin. All right, d- just just minimize your browser. We went through 132 pages. Right. What are the five things you're looking forward to this month? Mm, Avengers. Okay. The one on the cover. Storm. Storm. Gotcha. Uh, and then in my regular series that I enjoy, Fantastic Four. Okay. So out of 132 ASM. pages, you found two books. Two new books. Yeah. Two new yeah. books. Yeah. Is that bad? Yeah, that's friggin' pathetic. <sighs> well, how, about, how about you? Do you do better? No, Me? worse. <laughs> you, you found one. I, mean, I found you, a Disney cover I thought was cute. That's it. <laughs> and I'm angry at a Silk book. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm reading Silk too, so that's that's another one. Like, but I couldn't remember it. Mm-hmm. Oh. And you're waffling on Dark Genesis one through five. Oh no, I'm not waffling. I'm a definite no. Okay. I'm a hundred percent no on that. And just. Encouraging <laughs> others not to do it as well. But I'm I just actively love, like, against that book. In all reality, like the the biggest factor to you be like, "Ooh, I'll do Storm." Is it, you're like, "Eh, it's only five issues." That was one of its major selling points. Was its brevity. Mm, well, I mean, the ability to just check it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even committing. I'm not committing to five. I know, but, but what I just remember you saying, you're like, oh, I like her, it's a good character, an X, and it's only five. <laughs> I, I, did I say that? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's it's Storm, it's Silk, um, but, you know, I'm lukewarm on Silk. I was a I, I've, My expectations are for that to be garbage, so if it's yeah. anything better than garbage, I will be so friggin' happy. I, I'm, I'm a definite yes on Avengers. I'm, I'm leaning yes on the Hawk Annual. Um... I'm going to ask you after the first issue of Avengers, who's the mole? Who is the mole? Okay. And, you know, I'm, I'm all, I'm basically all out on Star Wars now. I, even though they have interesting concepts, I've been so disappointed with all of those when they've come out. 
that I'm just like, I'm not trying any more new ones because they're just not very good. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely out on Fury. Um, Daredevil and Echo was a maybe. I don't know where you were on that. Um, but yeah. No. But yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of new stuff. Definitely a lot of stuff. Not a lot of good stuff. Not a lot of new stuff that I'm interested in, yeah. Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need all in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the c4 fap links you could ever need thanks back to the show but you know what i bet you cbsi found some some stuff that was hot last week that's right of course we're in to our good friends at comicbookinvest.com and look at their february 17th version of the hot 10 comics and since we're a week behind on them this is going to be a lot of the stuff that came out of the dc thing and maybe even a little bit of ant-man yeah 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 those look very similar to previous weeks sorry i was choking i'm back and but the yes. first one we're going to start with is superman batman number eight the jeff Loeb written book 25 yeah. to 30 dollars collectors lost their minds this week when they saw Kara in the flash trailer during the super bowl is this her first who knows but everybody is king in on this issue yeah, I'm, are we sure that we haven't seen Kara Zor-El at some other point in all of action and Superman's history? <laughs> Doesn't it feel like we would have? It so it? feels like it. That's what I was thinking. Too. At rank two, Avengers 267. Over $160 for 9.6. 80 bucks for 9.2. $120 for 9.4. Rawls between 30 and 50. I've not seen Ant-Man yet, so I don't know what happens. We do. What I do know is this book has jumped again, but there's a ton of them out there, so either tread very lightly or go for the Newsies Mark this, this is version. not First Kang, is it? No, but I think this is first the Conqueror, Conqueror Kang. Or, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Airing 3 Avengers Annual 21, $25 to $30 for Rawls, easy 9.8 for $230. This also falls in the Haven't Seen Ant Man category. That being said, this was less than ten dollars a week ago, and reviews have said that whatever you like, this movie or not, Kang is impressive. That's first Council of Kang. Mm-hmm. That's what that is. That doesn't seem like okay. Yeah, I guess I I know why. Yeah, because I have seen him make this. Yeah. Yep. Rank four, Superman, Batman number eight, the Michael Turner Virgin variant, limited to one thousand copies, six hundred and fifty to seven hundred and fifty for a CGC nine point eight. As was said before, whether this is a key Kara book or not, this cover makes it a win every single time. Yes, good looking cover. No. At rank five, the timeless 2022 number one second print Todd Knock one and 25 variant. Ugh. 65 to 75, Miss Minutes is still wanted, which is really weird because she is just a cartoon clock with legs. I think people are excited about Loki coming back. and That's, that's what I was just about to say. Yep. Yeah, I regenerated some interest in these timeless Miss Minute things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Scarlet Witch, number one, the second print. Russell Donnerman, one in 25, is now going for between 60 and 70. Marvel went crazy this week with these one in 25 second prints. Kyle? Scarlet Witch is probably the lowest printed of the three. Yeah. Uh, you were t- calling these second print one in yep. 25s. Yep. And I was poo-pooing it. But it looks like you were the, you were correct, sir. Yep, they are. They are very niche, and very niche seems to be the the thing that everybody's looking for. Yeah. 
At rank seven, flashpoint number one, the Andy Kubert one in twenty five variant, almost ninety dollars. Man, I had very low expectations for Flash until we saw the trailer. Hope it lives up to the new trailer. At rank eight, we have Injustice Gods Among Us year three, number seven, between thirty and forty dollars. More Kara. For those that don't remember, the character in this book looks exactly like the actor. Bruno Redondo getting credit there. Good art, yep. At rank nine, the Invincible Iron Man number one, second print, Bob Layton, one in 25 variant. 45 to 60, when you look at this wraparound closely, it is so amazing, like really cool. I pointed this one out as well because I loved the Mark Mark one through Mark everything lineup. Love the, uh, love Is that. there a color version of this? Yes. Is it higher or lower uh, ratio? Great question. I'd be curious. I think, I mean, I think I'd like to see it in color. I don't like it. I don't love it in the sketch. But I'm, I, maybe, maybe that's the main cover. It, it looks good, though. It was a good looking book. At rank 10, The Last Barbarians, number one, Brian Haberlin, cover E. 10 to $15. Beautiful cover that came out this week. I like all of the Haberlin covers for this book, but this one gets the nod for now. Look that at her one, delts. Man. The Last Barbarians is a two time. Kyle pick of the week. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, I picked it during FOCN when it released. Oh, okay. Yep. Honorable mentions Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. Trade paperback from 2006. It's an $80 trade paperback. I don't get into politics. You can Google it yourself. Fact is, this is the last time Disney will have a couple of these issues in print. If you are a Scrooge fan, this is your only opportunity for these couple of issues in trade form. Um, what is the controversy, Kyle? No idea. Let me Google it. Google Scrooge McDuck controversy. It may be censored by the publisher omitting two issues for future printing, effectively banning. Yeah. What did he do? Yeah, two, they banned two Don, two Don Rusa or Rosa. From reprints of uh, Rosa received an email explaining two of the richest duck in the world, Dream of Life, won't be published. Um, oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> why it doesn't say why because he's ch- chasing capitalism and we can't do that <laughs> the richest stuck in stores why it doesn't say anything i already see many people posting get well quick uh, <clears throat> so not okay this the stories don't align with their values because <laughs> he's greedy A lot isn't that his fair. whole thing my homie loves money but he was yeah but he's known for being a D-bag because of that. It's not like he was a hero with that. Oh, wow. What so the heck? I don't understand the world. <laughs> and the other honorable mention, Weird Mysteries number 4, CGC 4.0, going for $10,000. Pre-COVID, a 5.0, sold for half of that classic cover for sure, although I can't figure out exactly why. Why is there an ant with the guy's head? How sharp is that knife that it went right through this skull? So weird. So weird. So I mean, I, I, I've passed over so many Scrooge McDucks, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and quarter bins and mm-hmm. fifty cent bins. Oh, they're out there. Come on. Yeah. Go, go get them, fel- fellas. Yeah. You know what else is out there? A list of FOC items. Yes. yes Our final is. order cutoff. This is the items that are coming out here in just a few weeks, but we still have the chance to order them, so we don't have to chase them on eBay and pay those exorbitant prices. So Drew and I go through the FOC list. I get an awesome little Excel sheet from our good friends at Deep Discount Comics saying, well, Kyle, what do you want to add to your order? And they make it quick, easy, and simple. Contact Cowbunga or Deep Discounts Comics. If you need somebody to order books from, if you're like Drew and myself, where you do not have a local and need a reliable uh, mail order. They're the ones to go to. Every fashion. For sure. For sure. But Kyle, look at um, the Batman Superman World's Finest. I was just getting yeah, Dan, Dan Mora. Mora. Yeah. Glorious. Love that book. That Top and bottom. A... Mm-hmm. It's just, oh, man, so nice. Yeah. We are over at Lunar Distributions looking at the FOC items for February 26th. And boy, that is a beautiful looking Dan Mora book. Yeah. So good. David Nakayama, Catwoman's great. So is that Sergio Acuna. I hate that David Nakayama, Catwoman book. 
Those ears Wait. are not even close. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I like the uh, Sergio Acuna. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Sweeney Boo's strange. Not bad. Ryan Gonzalez is a whack job. And uh, Christina Kalita could be, that could be anybody on the cover. It's I like not. it, except for the way she spelled her first name. I'm out. You think that's Christina? Uh, yes. Christina. Quist, Christina? I don't know. We've got Christina. yet another Prince cover with Deceased War of the Ended Gods number seven, Ben Oliver homage cover. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yet another Purple Rain homage. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just so random. Like, is that where did... help or her our OG cover that we have? Yeah, I've done sold that bad boy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Huh? That's cute though. Yeah, I, I like it. You know, anytime you get the crossover potential, jump on it. Heck yeah. That, that reminds me. I um, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember we were at a quarter sale at our old LCS and there was those Harley Rider comics from like 1984 in, oh yeah okay in and I just grabbed like a stack of like 20 of them because mm-hmm. I was like well Harley Davidson people are crazy man they'll, they'll yep. buy stuff and it so it was branded Harley Davidson and it was about a Harley Rider and it's it was worth like two bucks you know max you know, in, in Overstreet. Mm-hmm. And um, I just grabbed them, threw them in a box, and I'd put them on eBay. And I, I was selling them for 10 bucks at a, a pop. And, oh, you know, wow. they, they'd sell, they'd sell. And um, well, I'm da- I got my last one. I'm down to my last one. So I've sold all 20. <laughs> um, and the last, last one was for sale. Some guy was like trying, he was like, I'll give you eight bucks for it. When I, one of those make an offer. I yeah. Like, I was like, you know, going to take it. And I'm just, but I, but now I go and I verify that I have what I say I have <laughs> because <laughs> I don't trust my memory as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes that stuff might not be where I think it is. So I go and I grab it and it's my last, very last one. And I'm like, no, you know what? I'm not taking, I'm not taking a low offer on this. In fact, I'm going to decline this offer and I'm going to, re- raise the price <laughs> because it's my last one and That's I want to awesome. hold on to it because it was just like a fun find, you know, in a quarter bin. Mm-hmm. I grabbed them all um, with the idea that this is a crossover with a different audience. And so collectors of Harley Davidson will be interested in this. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, it wasn't like home runs, like they weren't hundred dollars a piece, but I sold them all, you know, you one at a time, dribs and drabs, and they they all sold. And so I'm, I want to keep, I'm going to hold on to this one and get a little bit more out of it. So my very last one. <laughs> it's got your own sentiment. Yeah. Into it. So we, when you're out, when you're out digging through bins and something like think, think, got to think creatively sometimes. Uh, think, yeah. out, think outside the comic box, I guess. Anyway, sorry about that little diatribe so i'm gonna pick up this deceased uh that has the prints because i like the idea of the crossover i like it that was the point i was trying to make i like it nightwing 102 uh i like the cover a i don't love the cover a i like the cover a you still enjoying the book yes still very good me too super well i'm just i'm just so doggone happy that he's writing it it's just yeah Yeah, it's nice to have I mean, I'm trying to think of the last time where we've had a, the same creator on a book for a long time and have been really happy with his output each yeah. and every every time, by and large. And I think it's probably Scott, Scott Snyder on Batman is how far yep. I have to go back. Yep. Um, because pretty much loved all of it. And then very I loved Slot. When he did the very long run on Spider-Man, yes, with Doctor Ock and the mind swap and everything. Superior Spider-Man, superior, was yeah, fantastic. And it was probably what 35, 40 issues. Mm-hmm. And the same for um, Mark Wade, Chris Samney, Daredevil. Yep. 
um, even though it, and it renumbered, that was a solid like 70 issues that I was just like, I, I love all of these. These are all really great. Yeah. So having that high caliber run, it's it's rare. Mm, yeah, very, it, it, super rare. It just doesn't happen as much as you'd think. And I guess I was thinking he was on all 100. He Tom Taylor came on what in the 70s? Yeah, he came on at like 82 with the uh, the mayor's daughter and all that stuff. It, so yeah. he's only done it for two years. Yeah, 20 issues. But it's, it, but it like but they've all been good. Yeah, just his run on it has made the entire volume seem so much better. Yeah, exactly. Um, GCPD finishes up with issue six. I'm excited about that. That's been a really fun one. I haven't even seen your night. Well, there's the Nightwing. Yeah, none, none of those are great. I yeah, like the yeah. I like the standard A cover the yep. most, and it's just basically um, fonts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, just pick the different characters of Titans and make the font that character's color. Yeah. Another issue of Sartorial Sartorial Geek, which I never read that issue that I bought. Oh, you never did. And still in the bag, unopened. Superman number two. Curious to see what this Superman issue, if there's any legs to it. But yeah, yeah. I, I've got the first one. I, was, I haven't got a chance to read it yet, but I'm I'm going to read that first issue because um, I you know I read the action relaunch. Um, so give it a shot. I mean I'm not, I'm not oh I don't love it the action, <laughs> but you know it seems like it's a step up in quality where mm-hmm. it was, which is good. We're doing tons of covers. Raw's is doing anything interesting. That one in 50 is okay. Nothing special. Not worth Ton, it. Tons of Wonder Woman covers, and I don't care about any of them because none of them are anything to write home about. None of them are Jenny Frinson. <laughs> yeah. How many covers can she do per month? Just make sure she does all of them. Yeah. Keep going. All right. I'm heading over to Image. Yes, sir. Dead Romans. Dead, yeah. Fred Kennedy and Nick uh, Marinkovich. Lots of covers. The miniseries premieres. Armanis, a Germanic prince, pr- raises in, rises in Rome, has sworn vengeance against the empire that butchered his people. Cool. Cool. Torrent hits issue two. Undiscovered. Second grant of Nemesis Reloaded. Yeah. Boom, giving us uh, the final issue of Damn Them All. So I still have issue one set on my to-read pile. Lord. Grim at Nine, dropped up book. Probably my fault. Yeah. Not theirs. I, in my head, it was it was over. <laughs> Neighbors is a book by Jude Ellison S. Doyle, a woman with too many, or man with too many names. Um. Letizia Kadonica. Kadonica Jeez, you know, write us a list of better people. And this is where uh, somebody moves to a quaint mountain town. And a horrific chain of events reveals the neighbors are anything but what they seem. They're vampires. Well, okay. There you go. You spoiled it. Now you don't have to read it. Yep. <laughs> Lots of cool covers-ish. Uh, I believe Dark Horse was giving us Order and Outrage, a four-issue series. Is that the only? Are you able to expand Dark Horse? No. Offerings? So it's just these four? or that's just those four. Yeah. Five. The second blue book is also out. I haven't read that first one yet. We need to do that. What was Order and Outrage? Oh, that was Jim Starlin book. Star Trek Deep Space Nine with a baseball cover. Very odd. Right? Very odd. That seems strange. Uh, Avengers Beyond launches for Marvel. Its first issue. Clobber in Time launches with its first issue. It's Jeff. A couple of those are very cute and adorable covers. <clears throat> Nightcrawler's number one going to a second print. That's a good idea. That's a good sign. Yeah. Didn't love it. There's Return of the Jedi Jabba's Palace, number one. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I actually very much like the Women's History variant, too. The Leia cover. I don't even see that one. Right beside it. So it's the third cover. 
The, the peach Dollar Momoko? Uh, I think it is peach. Yeah. But I like it. It's a very good cover. Okay. And that's all for Marvel from me. Dynamite, I'm guessing I'm not going to see anything. Yeah, nothing in Dynamite for me, at least. I'm guessing I won't be able to find anything there. Source Point Press gives us The Curse of Cleaver County, number one. Grotesque, gruesome, and gore-fueled killers. Oh. I don't know. That sounds kind of good. I don't know who (laughs) Garrett Gunt and Kit Walls are, but that's kind of cool. They also give us Deep Dark by David Sundra. I don't know what the Deep Dark is. It's a mythical place that she's looking for. You should stay out of it. (laughs) Yeah. Not a lot of info on that. What else is in the back? Anything? Nothing for me. It's a zombie side. That Last is the issue. old source point press. Yet another. All right, Drew, what's your pick you got to have for the old FOC? I'd like to say I'd like Curse of Cleaver County, but I think I got to go with the deceased War of the Undead Gods number seven Prince cover. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it, and it checks a lot on my boxes. I got to go with that World's Finest Dan Mora cover. There's something about it just draws the eye. Okay. It's one of those gotta-have-it covers. All right. Cool. All right, Drew, I'm heading over to our good friends at Cover Price, and I'm going to look at the top ten and see what is going on in the secondary market if we're still bananas or things are coming a little farther back. At rank one, we have... Avengers Annual 21, the direct edition from 1992. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Spoilers. Ant-Man got no. Ant-Man got no, not one, but two post-credit scenes. The second introduced another Kang variant in Victor Timely, whose first appearance is in this book. He's a big deal. Going back in time to 1901 to take over the world is a complete sec- or incomplete secrecy, which, as many know, Kang is anything but subtle. 30 copies on the secondary market, $35 for Rawls. At okay. rank two. Now I get it. I didn't really get it when we, we saw it, but now I kind of get it. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it, I saw the Victor Timely name and I knew that was a Kang. I just didn't, I didn't know that story that well. Yeah. At rank two, Superman Batman number eight from 2004. This book remains hot as fans continue to pick up post crisis reintroduction of Kara Zorel, aka Supergirl. As mentioned, the Flash trailer blew the minds of many outside of Flash and Michael Keaton's Batmans. Fans have been taken by Kara. She replaces Clark in this version of Flashpoint and was a major surprise for for fans. Many expected to see, many expected it to be Laura Lane Kent from Injustice Gods Among Us, Year Three, Number Seven, with a striking likeness to the on-screen version. That is until she name dropped herself in the trailer. Keep in mind that this Kara is not a perfect match to her blonde comic self. Seven day trend, two hundred dollars for CGC nine point eight, twenty four bucks for Rawls. At rank three, hell to pay number one from Image. What's up? So it's the post crisis reintroduction of Kara Zorel, not the first appearance of of Kara Zorel because she's Supergirl and it was way back. Yep, so yep. that's just weird and dumb. I'm not really understanding how we do that, but okay. All Very right. possible. Rank three, how to pay number one from image 2022 per deadline. Seth MacFarlane is set to adapt the shrouded college for Pe- the shrouded college for Peacock. It's a collection of seven connected stories. The first of which is this book, $65 for CGC 9.8, 10 bucks for all get on it quick. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust, uh, trust that. That seems really, strange but he did orville right he pulled yeah. orville off that, yeah. was, that was kind of a big swing um it's a it horror adventure adventure themes that that could be a market um yeah okay it yeah it's seth mcfarland i trust him i've come around i like it avengers 267 from 1986 of course quantum mania spoilers here as well pre-ant-man 
There was already speculation that the Council of Kangs would be an essential factor in the future of the MCU, leading into the future Avengers film, Avengers Kang Dinosaur Dynasty. Even Disney Plus's Loki alludes to the Council. Yet, as the end credits rolled on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, we were given an official first look at three Kang variants and the entire Council of Kang. CGC 9.8s, 280 bucks, 32 bucks for Raw. Batman 656 from 2006. Well, it appears the fandom has spoken for the past few weeks since Gunn announced his intentions to adapt The Brave and the Bold, the first appearance 656, and first cameo 655 of Damian Wayne have been neck and neck. That is no longer the case, as Damian Wayne's first full appearance remains his only key on this week's top 10. So 656, one out. As it should have. 25 copies. 375 for a CGC 9.8 rolls at $67. So Hulk 180, 181 situation. Here we go. At rank six, Batman movie adaptation number one. I got this sitting here right beside me. Uh, cool. I'm Batman. It took two words to make Michael Keaton's Batman a cult icon. But he uttered that oh so famous line in the recent trailer for Flash Goosebumps Arose. This led collectors to visit the aftermarket to acquire the first appearance of the iconic 1989 Batman in comics via this issue. 22 copies, CGC 9.8 for 100 bucks, Rawls for 16. I got this at the dime sale. <laughs> that's awesome. That's Hulk a, that's, one. Oh, what, is that, what is that? What uh, is that profit? <laughs> you paid a dime yeah. and you get $16 out of it. Um, <laughs> what is that? 16,000%. <laughs> That's pretty good. At rank seven, we have Hulk number one from 2008. This, of course, Red Hulk is back on our list. Blah, blah, blah. Thunderbolts, blah, blah, blah. Mocap, blah, blah, blah. Red Hulk. CDC 9.8, 325. 71 bucks for all. <laughs> rank eight, we have Flashpoint number one from 2011. We all know Flashpoint. It was a awesome trailer showing a lot of cool Flashpoint stuff where you might get some Thomas Wayne, some Michael Keaton, all kinds of good stuff. 20 copies sold, 90 bucks for raw, fair market, 62. At rank nine, Avengers 269, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. The end credit scene for Ant-Man. Before you do that, they're talking about, okay, so you mentioned there were three Batman in the trailer, or or they're going to be three in the movie, right? And that's because you think we're going to get... I think we're going to get a third thing. We've we've seen two. We've confirmed two. All that fun stuff. But I think you we're think there'll be a third. Okay. I think we're going to get like a Thomas Wayne thing or just something weird. Okay. And not yeah. not the Batman, not the Matt Reeves Batman. I don't think so. But yeah, I think there's going to be there's going to be some sort of zigzag in there. So it would be nice if they did a if they did that though and did yep. the Matt Reeves Batman to connect that universe to the mainline dc that'd be yeah. kind of cool yeah we'll see yep several kang variants including one of his more famous in ramu tut he was one of several notable variants to appear and this book reveals his origin fascinating 130 dollars for a cgc 9.8 rolls six dollars <laughs> and at rank 10 the amazing spider-man number 19 disney 100 black and white one in 100 variant, $160 was the high, 133 for your typical raw. At rank 11, Hellboy the Crooked Band, number one, because a new Hellboy film is in the works. Um, So this is a three-issue miniseries from 2011. Ten copies of this moved, uh, selling $35 for a raw copy. At rank 12, we have Astonishing X-Men number 9 from 2005. Some Mega Red. No, no. No, no, no. What is this about? Um, I don't even know what's going on. Danger. Okay. This is uh, Danger, the next villain in the Deadpool trilogy. So this was his first appearance in Astonishing X-Men number 9. 34 copies selling. High sale of 40 bucks for a raw. Uh, Superman, Batman, eight. This is the Kara debut, modern Kara. Um, this says it's do it. Did a uh, one twenty for a CGC nine eight and Raw's around twenty bucks. But can you find them for twenty bucks? Don't know. Um, uh, Marvel voices Wakanda Forever, number one from twenty twenty three. Uh, the debut of the last Black Panther, one of 
of the five stories in this book, The Last Black Panther provides a more hopeful message of the legacy. While no identity identity is revealed, a small baby emerges from the Black Panther suit. Is this baby a prominent player in future stories? Is there a more significant player behind the Black Panther drone? Um, 20 copies of this moved in a high sale of $12.60 for a raw. So that's kind of interesting. The first appearance of the yeah. Black Panther baby uh, gets you some points. All right. At rank 15, <laughs> we got Hell to Pay number one. Um, this is another one of the the Shrouded College things. Or something. Yeah, say, this is the one in 10. We had the regular. Yeah. This is the... Uh, 25 copies of this one sold high of $13.37. At rank 16, Batman 655. This is the cameo of Damien. Um, and it sold uh, selling for $54 for Raw. It's not bad. 300 for CGC 98. Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Um, sales are tapering off, but because it was mentioned by James Gunn, as a show or in our movie that would be developed um it sold 27 more copies high of 40 dollars for a raw that's cool booster gold also gun driven sale uh it's for his first issue from 1985 such a good book i remember that one well um tracked 18 copies selling high sale of 260 for a cgc 9.6 raw is around 77 bucks gotta dig that sucker out and sell it um at rank 19, we got Batman Beyond the White Knight, number eight, the top secret foil variant, one in 50. Um, and I don't didn't even, I don't even seen this foil thing, but anyway, sold 21 copies, high sale of 81 dollars for a raw. If you're publishing that, you, you can't call it a top secret variant anymore. <laughs> yeah. And at rank 20, the Omega Man number three, uh, Lobo again. Uh, his first appearance 22 more copies of the sold 370 for a cgc 9.8 near mints around 81 dollars so not too bad all right so that takes us to our sneak peek at next week and we are looking at books that come out on the 28th of february and the first we are and in the march, first right? of march right well that's yeah. weird when it when it Cuts like that. That is very mm-hmm. strange, isn't it? Very. And we'll, we'll start in DC with the, 20, the 228 books and look at some um, a second print for Action Comics 1051. And all the different covers for 1052. Yeah, we're still pushing it hard with a fun Rafa Sandoval, Sandoval uh, cover. Fun Clinton Henry. Lee Weeks is nice. Good stuff. Artist Elite presents. Holy smokes. Yeah. They get a little Those risque stuck, with their covers. Yeah. Banshees, number one from Scout. Doing a second printing of the Jack White cover. Buy it. Looks um, exactly the same. If you didn't buy the last one, buy this one. Uh, it, it will do well for you. Okay, so I'm traditionally not a big all red guy. All right. We have Batman the Audio Adventures number five, and he is essentially doing a Salvador Dali cover. Yeah, yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? It's interesting. I, I, of all the all red, I like that. Another great Rafa Sando, Sandoval cover for Batman vs. Robin 5. I like that a lot. Reminiscent of Death in the Family cover, maybe? A little bit. A little bit. Not an homage, but just reminiscent of. Uh, the Curse of Cleaver County gives us a slash can instead of an ash can um, of their book that's coming out. Definitely worth dragging down if you think it's going to hit, because this will be the the first you can get to it. There you go. We're finishing up uh, Sergeant Rock. Which, of course, means he's got to fight zombie Hitler. Yeah. Yep. He's already started in issue five. We'll see. I'm, I'm thinking he's going to win. All right, I want to go better. out on a limb. He yeah, had better. D-C-R-W-B-Y. Is that like pronounced like Ruby. Ruby? Is it pronounced Ruby? Yep. That's dumb. Detective Comics 1069. Good to see you. J.H. Williams the third back on covers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks, looks like a, a Batwoman cover. Yep. 
Oh, she needs a book uh, again, doesn't she? What, 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 when's the last time she had a book out? It's been a while. Jenny Frizen, Harley Quinn, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. They're all pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Human Target finishes up. Oh, I'm so excited to see how that goes. Uh, that's been a really great book. Another great Tom King book. So for Shocker. all you haters, all you haters out there, this was another great run for him. Lazarus Planet, Assault on Krypton goes to a second printing. Riddler Year One, the third issue with the Sinkevich cover. Mm. Nice. Everybody's favorite Robin, Tim Drake Robin, issue six. Hmm. What was I? Okay, so I I liked I liked the world's finest, but man, that audio Avengers Adventures Mike Allred thing is pretty cool too, man. Mm-hmm. Very cool. It's really nice. All right, let's check out what Image has this week. King Spawn twenty is a wicked nasty looking cover. Artwork gets a second print. Black Cloak gets a second print. Saga sixty one gets a second print. What did you say you got a second print? Uh, Black Cloak and Art Brute. Are you on the first? Am I on the wrong day? I am. Dumb guy. Cancel those last items and talk about Saga 61 getting a second print. Yeah. Did you already talk about the King Spawn uh, sketch? Yep. That's with the blue lines? Oh, yep. man, that's so nice. What's Phantom Road? Remind me what that is. Oh, that's Jeff Lemire. Mm-hmm. Gab- Gabriel Hernandez Walta. Oh, wow. Long haul t- truck driver attempting to stay ahead of his tragic past. Oof. Grindhouse horror meets high concept supernatural, of course. Can't just be a truck driver on the road running from his past. Gotta have supernatural. Let's throw that in there. But of course. I just read uh, Saga 62, Kyle. Man, so good. <laughs> so freaking good. See, boom, giving us four books, two books, a Buffy, and a Magic <laughs> the Gathering. That's it. Say thank you and move on. Dark Horse seems to, sometimes they have lots of stuff, and sometimes they don't. Yeah, well, including the Last of Us figurine, so my. Mm, that's a good yeah. idea. Is Joel um, Pedro Pascal character? No. He's Who's video Joel? game. But it's the same character name, right? That's his name in the show, too, right? The main yes. character? Yeah. Are you current? Yes. It's quite good. <laughs> it's, it's really good, yeah. And uh, how f- how far are we? Uh, like six of nine. In the game. Oh, we're still... Uh, well, we visited the town from game two, but we're still way into, into game one. I'm just trying to figure out exactly where our cliffhanger point is going to be. So the 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 town where the the f- mushrooms came out of the ground, that one, where they were r- running from the running from the bad lady. No, the town where he meets his brother and everybody's happy and they oh, got a really the dope giant, society. The yeah. Wyoming town. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's in season two. Yeah. Or in, in game in, two. Game two. Yeah. So they just kind of like jumped around. But it's already got picked up for a second season, right? I believe so. So we only have three more episodes left for this season? Yes. And, and I'm you don't... trying to figure out where. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly what they're going to cut off at because they've already shown us too much. <laughs> yeah. I hope they don't do any more fillers. I hope it's just like balls to the wall. Stuff. No, now, the next one we're gonna get. We're gonna get all of Ellie's backstory, including how she hurt herself and her. Oh, her, who she killed. Yep, yeah, all that fun stuff. Hey, you look at these Hollows Eve from Marvel. No. This very weird Chris Allen cover. Oh, weird. Yeah, almost made like a serial killer's ransom. I don't know. Ghost Rider also not Ghost Rider. Cosmic Ghost Rider gets a new number one. Who thought that was a good idea? I am Iron Man relaunches, and who's doing this? Mariwa 
Ayadeli and Adadadan Akande. God, I'm butchering people, man. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Um, it's a new number one, though. Final issue of Murder World. I know it says number one, but it's the final issue of this. What? Yeah. Rogan Gambit launch with the new number one. That should be fun. Spider Gwen Shadow Clones number one. This is this is where she is different um villains in each episode each issue. Or something odd like that. Spider Man Unforgiven. Yeah, what that is. Uh, you during the FOC phase, you had some interest in the Jar Jar Binks. That's what I was just looking at. I, I just clicked on that one. Yeah. Because of the possibilities of uh, c- collectors, you know, yep. coming for this one. Yep. It is on my radar yet again. Let's see, in the Marvel for me, so far, nothing in Dynamite, really. That's the first Barbarella. I think that might be. That might do something. And do we have a movie variant that has Sydney Sweeney on it? No, Give us a, that. Yes. Just a, just a cosplay. But mark that down. That'll be my pick. When yes, that. if that ever comes to fruition, that's the one. <laughs> and all night and every day, one shot from Aftershock. Is a Ray Fox, Andrea Fratella book. 48 page prestige format. One shock, they call it. Must be some like horror elements to it. Looks pretty good though. Doesn't look bad. Flesh eating cheerleaders from outer space. Have you heard anything more about Aftershocks having trouble with the cash flow? I've not heard anything. Pending bankruptcy and stuff. I hope not. They're one of the good ones. Uh, Dead Fellows, number one from Scout. It's a nonstop title. You know, Kyle, what the nonstop imprint is, don't you? It doesn't stop. <laughs> it's, it's, it won't quit. It won't quit. I'm guessing that's our all ages imprint. Does that sound right? Yep. Hallowed, number one. This is a uh, keen spot, which we don't think too highly of normally. Normally. Um, Mad Cave giving us Hunt, Kill, Repeat. It's like a Marguerite Sauvage cover with a pregnant person on it. And then pr- she's not pregnant in the f- other cover, if that's the same character. Yeah, it was a so, if. That's interesting. Night of the Living Dead photo covers. Those are interesting from American Mythology. Oh, those are all signed, so they're 20 bucks. Forget it. Forget it. It was a wonderful idea, though. It was. I was like, ooh, kind of like that. Zombie crossover. Red Zone number one from AWA. I like it. Colin Bunn. Mike Diodata. Good looking stuff. There. Roach Mill from It's Alive. I don't really know what... Is this like a Punisher-esque sort of thing? <coughs> oh, it's a return of a series from the 80s. Oh, my favorite. So get out your chromiums and your uh, poly bags. And they do a, a, a cover with... What's the cover H doing? What is it? What is that case it's in? It's not a CGC case. What's the title again? Uh, Roach Mill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's from It's Alive. Or is that like a magnifying glass? Yeah, not, it's like, it's weird. I'm not sure what they're trying to pull off there, which is bad. <laughs> if I can't tell. If you can't tell, nobody can. Sumerian giving us rock and roll hell, number one. So what's the what's the album cover that we're getting with Roach Mill, the cover G for Roach Mill? Well, I mean, that looks like a bunch of covers with four guys on the cover. It could be like, um, was it Let It Be, the Beatles? Isn't that like that? Yes. That sounds about right. Yeah. 
That's about it from me. Get another hardcover for We Live from Aftershock. That book is awesome. I don't know that book, do I? Did if I you don't, you should give it a you shot. You liked it? Yeah, you liked I very it. much did. Very cool. All right, man. This is going to be tough. I'm going to take Jar Jar again just for fun. You got you got Jar Jar? Yep. All right. I think I th- that I took World's Finest Jack White cover before the first round. I don't feel like I should take it again. When I have a Salvador Dali homage <laughs> at my fingertips. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go with Batman the Audio Ad- Adventures number five. It's going to be a low print run, too. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think, like, I think it'll be a way lower than the second print of this world's fine as well. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I I think you're right about the um. The Honorable Jar. mention was uh, Harley Quinn, the Jenny Frizen cover C. That was my uh, the other one I was bantying back and forth. Yeah. It's I mean, so nice. You could take uh, Jenny Frizen each and every week. Yeah. yeah. And not go wrong. Yep. Speaking of not going wrong, <laughs> thank you for hang along with Drew and our, myself through our sneak peek at next week, head on over to patreon.com, throw us a couple bucks, be part of the Slack, hear our exclusive podcast where we go see the movies and tell you what we thought about them and complain about how the popcorn wasn't any good and all the fun stuff like that. <laughs> we very much enjoy all of our wonderful patrons and the people that have made us feel really, really, really wonderful and like a community. We thank you so much for that. So for Drew and for myself, see ya. The good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit have been doing two episodes a week um, for quite some time now, and it's all thanks to, first of all, Jason, and second of all, our patrons, who allow us to add the space on our server, broadcast more, store more, share more with you listeners. I'm envious of those of you who have unlimited storage and media server capabilities, we, we pay for ours here at at the C4FAP. It ain't cheap. We thank you so much for those of you who go to patreon.com slash comicsfunprofit and contribute at any level to say thanks, to say I want to be a part of your Slack channel conversations. I want to get exclusives. I want to get early access. I want to get ad-free access. I want to get swag. I want to get some free stuff. Whatever your reasoning is, we appreciate it at any level because it does make a difference. So from the bottom of Kyle and I and Jason's heart, thank you for contributing.